This holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday. While traveling, it's usually best to pack light. When it comes to money, carrying some cash and having an alternative like Zelle is a great idea. Zelle's an easy way to send and receive money with people you trust at any U.S. bank. It's already in thousands of different banking apps, and it's money straight into your bank account in minutes fast. Look for Zelle in your banking app today. Safe travels. Put that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping. That'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. The songs. And welcome to Talk of the Tavern. I'm Travis Sivart. I'm Count your host. Tip cheered. X100. And, and we just had some bits thrown at us. Thank you very much for that Celt dub. Appreciate that. Here's to you. Um, so, welcome to Talk of the Tavern. As I say, tonight's topic is uh, survival snack storage, where we're going to talk about uh, canning and things to bring camping and enjoy that you can keep for a long time and, and enjoy over that even longer time. I do want to let everybody know that uh, we're adults talking about adult topics using adult language. We're going to laugh and make jokes about almost everything, and we will offend somebody free of charge. You're welcome. Uh, but you came here to be entertained, so the rules are no being offended. If you do find yourself offended or upset, simply leave. Get out. Walk away. And it's okay. We don't mind. Um Okay, other than that, the disclaimer is this is a live recorded show with a chat audience that we will be interacting with. I have a bell I sometimes ding when I want to read off comments, and I can't get it because I have a cat on my lap. Hold on. There we go. So when you hear this noise, it means I want to read off some comments, though I'll probably read them off without using the annoying bell. Um, and for those listening on the podcast, that was for you. For those in chat watching the live show on twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk, uh, we are recording a podcast, so we might not respond to every comment in chat, but we will try to get to the ones that are relevant or that just amuse or interest us in some way or another. Um, now, after that, we, we had to flip a coin to see which one is my other half here to see which one we introduce first. So uh, I don't have that coin on me. I don't remember which one it is. So we'll go with Ed. <laughs> What's up, people? I'm Ed. I'm here. What are your vices, Travis? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I do have pipes, but I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for them tonight. Uh, I do have some Jameson's Black Barrel just a little bit left, so I might try to polish that off this show. And uh, water, because I'm just not in the mood for anything else tonight, so. Here's to that. What what are yours, there, Ed? Let's drink some water. He had cold rock or bold rock. He had some rock. He was rock bold. earlier. And then my other half was it the rock from the other room? <laughs> I don't know. I might even uh, trouble to myself to try a little rock. Um, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Hi, Andrea LaChat here from Twitch TV. Um, I'll be streaming again this week, hopefully. My vices are tea, because that's how I have my water. And Haribo mints. Bag a day habit. There we go. It's, uh, that, let's see here. Oh, yeah, I want to let everybody know we do have merch, which anybody listening to the podcast can find at bit.ly slash Travis Merch. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Travis Merch. 
That's bit.ly slash Travis Merch. For those of you watching the live show, you can see the little thing in the corner that shows you a variety of different items that we have from coffee cups to t-shirts to stickers and all kinds of cool little things for the show, as well as the other podcasts, Right Night and uh, Stealing for Survival, that you can find on all your various podcast places. Um, and if you're listening to the podcast, you already know where they are. So i got to work around my cats here that are uh, ranging up to me and sitting on me. Okay, we did that, we did that. Okay, good. Let's go into the actual topic, which... Snack store. Again. Yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about technical issues that never happened through the magic <laughs> of technology. Um, I feel like we have to explain it to anybody listening to podcasts. We did 10 minutes of the show with one of our mics not registering. But so, there, there. Okay, it was mine. The one like <laughs> running the show. It's uh, Anyhow. So... Survival snack storage. We, we want to talk about snacks that you could bring camping or store for a long period of time so you have instant food. Or in case the world blows up, you've got something to munch on while you're waiting for the zombies and or While aliens. you're watching. What's that? While you're watching the world blow up. So what about water, Ed? Do you can water? You can can, can, can fluids. Wow. Uh, you can can fluids. Uh, <laughs> we don't can water. We just have water storage in the house. But there you go. So what sure, about... Uh, you can. She has canned juices before. She's made her own juices and canned them. Well, I, lo- I love yeah. to make mulled cranberry juice with rum in it. Sure. Is that something I could can and put away and then have for later Absolutely. in the year? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if I understand the basics of canning, and either of you could jump in and interrupt me on this one, um, from what I understand, you get a double boiler. So you get one pot of water, you put another mm-hmm. pot with water in that, and they have special ones just for this. And then you put your jar there, because most canning, as far as I know, is done with jars. Mm-hmm. And you, you got that two-part lid. It's a special jar. They, they look like the cool old-fashioned jars. And by the way, there's a spaghetti sauce out there that has the same kind of jar, and then you can buy the lids for the canning for it. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're watching this live, look behind it. Bertoli. Hmm? Oh, Bertoli. I, I was seeing if I had one handy, but... It's, yeah, there's nothing nearby. It's Bertoli. Oh. Because I buy them just so we have the jars. Well, while he's grabbing that, so basically you have a two-piece lid... And the lid has the flat part on top, and then you put, there you go, as he's showing, and then you have the threaded part. So you put the flat part Mm -hmm. on, screw the lid down, and then put it in the double Mm -hmm. boiler, and the heat of that will actually cause it to swell, because heat causes this thing to expand, and it seals it. So is that a regular canning jar, or is that the Bertoli jar? This is a regular canning jar. This is just dried stuff in it, so it's not sealed or anything. It's, uh, oh, I was going to say, you have to eat that now. Red beans. Red beans. So that's dry goods. Yeah. Hey! Mm-hmm. Hold on, we're going to interrupt for this. Thank you for showing us your bits, Elizabeth. 20 Pickle bits for there. swelling. Huh? Hey, girl. For swelling. It's a... Uh, hold on, I got a special Is thing. my mic working? Yes, it is. Oh. There you go. For anybody in the chat who doesn't know Elizabeth, check out her channel and show her a little bit of love over there. So, uh, um, right. So, Ed, you mentioned another kind of canning. Um, uh, pressure canning. You you do it in a pressure canner, big pot. You seal the lid on, screw it down, seal it on, and put the little weight on it, and toot, 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 toot. Yeah, it, it makes noise. It, it, it makes obnoxious. noises. It's yeah. a... This is Gary Ganoush. And there's and Gary no joining us. Is good Ganoush. Hey, Gary. There he is. It's uh. What up, Gary? Cares to you guys. There Always good it... to see you guys. What, Andrew? There is another type of canning. Baby shark. Where you seal it with wax. Have you yeah. heard about that? You can do that, too. 
Yeah, because if you if you notice in the grocery stores, they have like the big blocks of of wax. That's what a lot of people do. You just cover the top of it. <laughs> and hello baby to Jewel. Thanks That's for baby stopping shark. in. What's that, Andrew? See baby shark. Yeah. Yeah, we had baby shark and then Elizabeth played with her cock. You can hear it crowing in the background there, guys. Mm. And, uh, I can't hear it. I know. I'm jealous. That's why I said it. Um, so, is it the... Is it the... Uh, Regular kind of pressure cooker with the little thing that wobbles on top that terrifies people. Yeah, yeah it's it's one of them. Yeah. It is. So you can use your regular pressure cooker to can. Um, what do I don't know what normal people use those for. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last of the whiskey. Uh, not the pressure cooker. That noise that I that was me uncorking the last of the bottle here and recorking it. Okay, so with the uh, regular, mm-hmm. um, do you cook in those? In a regular pressure cooker, I have not. Yeah. I, I've had family that does, and I have an Instapot now, which is like a pressure okay. cooker and a um, crock pot. Had a baby. Apparently, do not can in that. Do not. Probably <laughs> probably not much in a danger of that there. It's a, uh, so what's yeah, the, the only regular pressure cooker I'm familiar with was electrical. So no, you don't can it now. Okay. Yeah, but, it's uh I, I've But yeah, the little one with the weight on it. Yeah. That's that's yep. the deal. See, pressure cookers freak me out because now that I have the Instapot, I'm looking at it where I made a chili that normally takes me six to ten hours to cook. And I cooked it in 20, 25 minutes. I'm just like, this isn't right. But it tasted right. And I was very confused. <laughs> and Andrea was looking at the cookbook for the Instapot because she wanted to make a beef stew. Yeah, 28 minutes. No. Yeah. It, that, that's got to take all day. You got to fill the house with the aroma. Yeah, because 28 minutes... Takes that long to peel the potatoes. No. That's true. See, Andrea will get it cooking and then, you know, work as it's cooking and add stuff as it's going. Now you have to prep it all yeah. in front. And, but you can make it for Yeah, you, you cook the meat overnight. You start like tonight, I'm going to start the meat. It yes, cooks yes. overnight. You wake up early in the morning. Mm-hmm. You throw in the carrots, the onions, the potatoes, the stuff. Mm-hmm. And then dinner time, it's ready. Okay. Mm. Very good. It's uh so Ed, what's some of your favorite things that you can that you love to just open up and eat straight from the jar? Uh anything pickled. Anything pickled. So anything what? pickled. She does pickled mushrooms, pickled cabbage, pickled pickled onions. Pickled onions are delicious. Who's here? I have had pickled onion. Elizabeth Pickle Lady says pickles. <laughs> it's, uh, which, by the way, for anybody that doesn't know, to to make pickles, you need a special cucumber. You can't just use any cucumber. Well, I guess you can, yeah. but uh, you can. But they, yeah. I have had pickled. Green... You can. It may not be the what you want, but you can. <laughs> I've had pickled green tomatoes that were canned, mm. and those were. Oh no! I see the face Andrew just made. They were really. Really good, and I don't know if they're a special tomato, or else if they're just like not ripe tomatoes, like what we have growing out front right now. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, here's a quick tangent. So earlier, Andrea planted kind of late this year, but she planted pumpkins and watermelons, and the watermelons just started coming in less than a month ago, and she's got them growing on the porch, so the vines are growing down the like three and a half foot drop, and. Uh, Andre has gone and started making little mesh slings to put around them so the weight of them don't pull them off the vine. <laughs> so we have all these cradled watermelons hanging off our porch. Yeah. And I think the biggest one is a little Well, I don't want there. them to get big and fall down. Right. No, that makes sense. You've just got to lengthen the rope every couple of days. 
You can pickle the now, rinds too. They're really good. No, see, I don't have to make the um, cord longer. I have the mesh so it'll expand. Well, I'm talking about as the vine grows longer and the weight pulls down more, you want to keep the watermelon at the same pace of the vine growth. Maybe. 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 Okay. I'm wondering how big they'll get. That's what she said. Mm-hmm. Broke it. It's, uh, and you said something about the rinds. You can pickle the rinds. Mm-hmm. I've yeah. never had that. It's so, really good. <laughs> thank you for more bits there, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. So when you uh, pickle something in vinegar, is it regular white mm-hmm. vinegar? Is it apple cider? What do you use? Eat white vinegar, apple cider vinegar, whatever the recipe calls for, whatever you got in the house. I know the, of course, the both apple of them do two different. It'll it'll make a different flavor, right? And they react differently with different vegetables depending on what you use. So, Andrea, any idea what works best with apple cider vinegar? I want to say, I want to say beets, but I don't remember. Ooh. It's been a while. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Pickled beets. Yeah. That's the one anything pickled I will not eat. That's the cans that somehow ended up in the food drive when I was in school. A mm. whole lot of people didn't want to eat them, huh? Yeah, like I, I'm like, who, who the heck bought this thing if we're just giving it away? Why, why do you? Well, that's why I had so many growing up because we were very poor and we received those cans that you brought to school. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the thing is, even though I went to school a few years before you, it could have been the same can. <laughs> yeah. It's like fruitcake, yeah. Yeah. I like fruitcake. Mm. Yeah. It depends. I don't like I don't like the stuff in the store, but if I make it myself, it's all right. It's a Elizabeth says beets are amazing, so I'll have to try some of her beets, if you know what I mean. Mm. What about Beats by Dre? They're overpriced. That's a different kind of beat there. <laughs> so, Ed, what's the big difference between canning, let's say, beef jerky versus dry beans versus spaghetti sauce? <laughs> We cheat when we do spaghetti sauce because Teresa buys a big can of tomato sauce and then just doctors it up and cans it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's easier. Uh, but what's the difference in the pro? Is there a difference in the process? Um, to, tomato-based stuff is acidic, and anything that you're pickling um, is also acidic, so you can water bath it. Uh, anything else you're going to want to pretty much pressure cook to make sure you get all the uh, bad bacteria out. Okay. And you say it's a... Because if you do it wrong, you'll know, because it'll start mildewing pretty quick. Oh, if you do it wrong, the moment you pop the lid on that can, baby, you know it's wrong. Why don't we call it jarring? I really have a problem with this. Why do we call it canning when it's not a can? I, I realize it's an old well, term, and cans came after jars. Now, mm-hmm. now mm. and, and it's not all just done in glass jars. You can do it in aluminum cans. I know some people that did that. you got to have, like, a, a special machine press thing for it. But Where do you buy those can be cans? Because those are not... On your local Walmart shelf next to the... Which, by the way, with COVID, canning supplies are selling out now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And they're being used not just for weddings and decorations. They are being used for canning. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the cans for the aluminum cans, you can buy them online. So let me ask you this, Ed. Andrea's growing fresh herbs now. Mm-hmm. Um, or as Kevin would say if he was on herbs. Um, so can I take some of those, do them how I want, and then can those? You, it, is it something you're going to want to cook, or 
No, it's dehydrate not or the cooking. But if she gets a huge crop that I can't use in a reasonable amount of time, I want to be mm-hmm. able to safely store this. I saw Andrea making a face here. Did you want to add something to this? Yeah, you. That's why I've been drying them. You you dry yeah, them exactly. Dry them. It's okay. like the stuff they have at the store. That's why you know you see the bundles of stuff hanging around in the house. I'm drying the herbs. But it eventually mm-hmm. loses flavor if you don't have it in an airtight container. You can you can vacuum seal it. Yeah, you can dry it and vacuum seal it, or you can just dry it and put it in a can. You don't even have to go through the I'm canning closing. process and tighten that yeah. lid up on there. And hold on oh. a second, Kevin is. In the house. <laughs> <laughs> Social Assassin 76 and Chad and Pickle Lady and Chris they're they're all co-hosts that we've had on Talk of the Tavern at certain points in time and that will be returning now and then um as as we need and hopefully they'll say yes but yes we did mention your name Kevin good to see you man it's uh this is mm-hmm. what the tavern is about people coming in and hanging out and being called out so uh welcome to you man how's life going for you so ed i see all these things behind you and i know you've canned fruits you've canned vegetables you've canned meats i wanted to hear a little more about the meat (laughs) yeah yeah sure she said (laughs) yeah we do (laughs) So, so how do you prepare the meat before you can it is it only jerky? We, we, no, we go ahead and cook the meat whatever way we're going to want to eat it later on, whether it's uh, usually baked or smoked, or Teresa makes quite a bit of barbecue if it's pork. Really? Um, but usually baked or smoked and then can it. Um, so I can make some air fried chicken breasts and can them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, now I'm guessing this is something that's not going to last as long. Sure. You still get your ten years once it's canned and sealed. You'll still get your ten years shelf life. Yeah. Now, don't be surprised if it turns color or whatever. But the key is when you pop that lid. If it smells like it just went in a jar yesterday, which it will. I, I've opened stuff off the shelf five years. hadn't We hadn't been into a ten years yet, but I've opened stuff off the shelf from five years ago. It smells like it went in a jar yesterday, and mm-hmm. tastes fine. And the reason why it changes color is because of the light. A yeah. lot of meat changes color because of the UV hitting it. Yep. So tell me about jerky. You make jerky, right? Yeah, we make jerky. And what do you like to make jerky out of? Uh, beef beef or venison, usually. Beef, and, uh, beef or venison. We have a dehydrator. Mm-hmm. Hmm? Beef, beef, or venison. Gotcha. Yeah, beef, beef, or venison. Yeah. <laughs> So suddenly I, I'm much more interested because a lot of times when I get food, I'll uh, prep it, even cook it, and then freeze it so I can use it again later and just, you know, have something that's already cooked easy to mix in. So when you're in your grocery store and you're mm-hmm. buying your fajita mix, it, it's pretty mm-hmm. easy to just have the meat prepared in the freezer already. Then you add your fresh onions and peppers. Or right. You exactly. To. Same idea with canning. That's why we do that. Now, you can't make like a whole fajita mix and mix the onions and peppers and, and beef or chicken or whatever you want on your fajitas and then can that, can you? Sure. Mm-hmm. Really? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Huh. <laughs> I know, right? Yes, you can. No. <laughs> Andrew? Now, as far as the jerkies, mm-hmm. as far as the jerkies, What's the, what's your favorite thing to do with that? Do you season it first or, I mean, how do you? Yeah, when we do, we don't usually can our jerky. We, uh, we, when we make beef jerky, we usually just go ahead and seal a meal it. We have a sealer also. Um, and as far as flavoring, whatever, I reach up in the cabinet and. <laughs> so, unfortunately we don't have recipes for much of anything it's just no, it's see, the seasoning part now, I, how, I do have you, down. how do you do sorry Go on. how do you do jerky is it de- in the dehydrator or yeah how, how we have you, a dehydrator no, hold yeah. on one moment so you just put it in there and dry it out 
I'm sorry. Before Ed answers, let me give a weird one. Good to see you, man. Thank you for joining us. It's my unofficial moderator. Hi. He hangs out a lot. Okay. So, yeah. Can you actually go through the process of dehydrating? How does that work? What kind of meats work best? De- dehydrating, we, you can, you want a meat that's low fat content. Um, you can do something that has high fat content, but it's just going to take longer because you, you want it to be dry so that it don't rock on you later on. Um, but you want a, a cut that's low fat content, slice it up. Um, and just, we have a dehydrator with like a dozen trays in it, put it on the de- dehydrators. And they usually have settings on them. If you, if you get the right one, it says fruits, vegetables, meat. You set the setting and now, let it do its thing. You take your meat and you cook it like normal with whatever season you want, or do you just marinate it and then dehydrate it, or do you do dehydrate wrong and then add seasoning to it? With uh, uh, a dehydrator, you don't have to cook it first. You just marinate it, marinate it, and put it in there. Okay. You I don't thought... have to cook it. Yeah. Oh. No, because the dehydrator actually slow cooks it. It's it's a slow cooking process. Yeah. Oh. It's uh. See, I didn't know that. I thought it just pulled the moisture out. That too, but, but it's I guess like that at uh, it 175 to 225 degrees, depending on the dehydrator and, and what you're dehydrating. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can do it in an oven, but I've never tried that before. I think it's like 200 degrees and you prop the door open. I have. And, and it I'm, takes like six I'm sure hours. it probably takes consider. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. All right. It takes how long? Like six hours, if I remember correctly. Oh. It takes um, a while. But you see, know, I have a list. You know the uh, <laughs> cookie racks we have that we started when we would cook fries in the oven, we put it on that. You put that mm-hmm. underneath whatever meat you're dehydrating in the oven. So I'm guessing the air fryer would work well, too. This holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday. The Maybe because sometimes if you leave stuff in there, it dries out. It that might burn it too. Um, okay, I have a list, and I was doing some research. So freeze dried stuff is that something you can do at home, or does that have to be done like commercially? I got to be honest with you, I don't know the process. I just know that freeze dried stuff doesn't last as long as dehydrated stuff. But yeah. I don't know what the process is. But freeze dried ice cream. It's good. <laughs> and they sell these little snacks for babies at the stores like yogurt, yogurt drops, but it's basically freeze dried yogurt. Ooh. They're really good. So, so let's talk about meat still. <laughs> sure. It's uh because I really want to make jerky. And the one time I did make it in the oven. And I did have a dehydrator at a time, and it didn't seem to work very well. I don't know if I had a bad one or did it wrong. But, uh, okay, mm-hmm. so you get like a London broil or whatever piece of meat you get. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And, and not necessarily right now, but at certain points of time, London broil was as inexpensive when you catch it on sale as chicken breast. Mm-hmm. Now, have you ever tried chicken jerky? Mm-hmm. No, and just because Why? I like chicken salad and pretty much that's it. <laughs> you don't like, this, like baked chicken breast or anything? Okay. So I know you're not a fan of fried chicken. So there, have that stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Which, by the way, a quick I wonder, oh, you know what would be interesting? What? Some fried chicken jerky. That would be interesting. And there was much rejoicing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I have ran out of whiskey. I am sad now. I'm wondering what I have behind me. Aww. I know. It, it's, uh, 
Okay, so with the jerky, you, you take your meat, you slice it into thin things, you, you marinate it for um, however long you want. Generally, 24 hours is a good marination time. 24 Four hours, hours, yeah. Minimum. Yeah. I feel like a, a four-hour marinade is a cheat. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at chat where there was much rejoicing and big old dysfunctional family party, says Kevin. It's a... Uh, Chris, what are you saying you know about? What What are you... Oh, I think... You fried chicken like your, jerky, probably. Probably. I found <laughs> some of the best fried chicken where I'm currently working across the street as a gas station, and it has great fried chicken and shrimp and catfish. And it, it's, a, it's a clean, big gas station, but it, it's Indian people who come out with like the steaming hot chicken and it's incredible and I have like turned on all my co-workers to it <laughs> it's uh so okay so what do you like to marinate yours in because the marination in this particular instance really does make a big difference and when I ask that not necessarily you know garlic pepper onion powder or flakes or whatever but Mm. Do you use Worcestershire, a a one sauce, any liquids when you marinate? I'm I'm not a Worcestershire person. I mean, <laughs> we we've experimented. You know, we've tried red wine. We've tried hell. Have you even tried bourbon? Um, so very good to marinate uh, or just <laughs> drink. Because I think we need to clarify uh, to marinate oh. to marinate. Yeah. A, on bourbon, not just bourbon alone, but bourbon with like brown sugar and whatever okay. other mess in it. What works uh, best? Uh, light vinegar, just a wee bit of vinegar. Really, and seasoning. Yeah, and see, and your seasoning. Um, it helps. It helps the seasoning to get into the meat better. I think. I feel. Well. Yeah. There, there's a difference between like just dry, tough jerky and that jerky that's still slightly mm -hmm. moist and chewable. Because mm -hmm. I read a lot and uh, you, you see about, you know, jerky on the high seas or within the old west. And they would actually cut a piece off or bite a piece off and then let it soak in their own saliva in their mouth till it was soft enough to chew. How's your jerky turn out once you've right. done it? It, it depends on whether we're making it for long lasting or whether we're making it to eat up in a couple of weeks or so. Um, if, if we want something that we're just going to eat, take camp and give to folks and everything, it's going to be somewhat soft because. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> and that will just make some and we'll seal it up and toss it in the refrigerator it's not going to be cooked as long, so it's not going to last as long. I do want we're to making point it out. to actually preserve it. Go on. <laughs> if we're making it to actually preserve it, then it's going to be dry. It's going to be like you said. You're okay. going to have to. A bit tough. Um, and there's nothing wrong. Put it, it, and usually that's better if you put it in a soup or something than just trying mm -hmm. to eat it. Okay, using it as an additive to something larger instead of just straight up jerky. Right. Okay. Right. It's now I've got to find a place to put a dehydrator and find out if I can use the Instapot for the <laughs> pressure cooker or if I need something else. Huh. Now, we also make uh, pemmican. Don't know if you've ever heard of it or not. No, tell me. Pem pemmican something that's been around since like the 1700s. Yeah. And probably there's, if you find some from the 1700s, you can probably still eat it. Um, it's made from tylo. Very, 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 very dehydrated beef, and then you usually add a very, very, very dehydrated berry of some kind. And you mix it all up together, and you just pour it in a jar or a tin or whatever. You don't have to seal it, and it lasts forever. Interesting. And what is How do you eat that? You have to soak it? Pemmican. And what is it? You want a link? Well, hold on. Let me read a couple comments. Mm -hmm. Weirdo Wind says those cuts were also a half inch thick too. And... Meat and berries. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin says Ed's right. Either acid, vinegar, or lactose cream yogurt are effective at chemically penetrating meat for a deeper flavor marinade. 
So I knew Kevin would know. Well, just for anybody who doesn't know, Kevin is a professional chef. Mm-hmm. It's what he does for a living. So he's always got good information in, in that regard. Sorry, I'm throwing things around. Oops. So this, you're, you're saying you don't have to seal it when you use pemmican? No. What is 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 it pemmican wax? Uh, it's tallow, the kidney fat. Oh, of okay, a beef sheep, fat. pig. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, multiple sheep. So interesting. If you you don't even have to can it after that. Nope. It's just okay. Yes, Andrea. Yeah. After you take it out of the kidney fat or whatever, the meat and the berries. Mm-hmm. Do you have to soak them or cook them? Um, you can't just eat it, can you? Let me see if I can find some handy here. I'm also oh, curious God. how meat and berries some? together would oh. taste when you did cook them. Because besides, like, you know, cranberry sauce on Thanksgiving, I'm not terribly familiar it with pretty that. pretty much, huh? I don't know how well you can see it. It's kind of, it's mixed together. It's all mixed together. The berries, the meat, the tallow, all mixed together. And it's oh, hard. Oh, tallow. It's, okay. Yeah, tallow. Yeah, which is... And it's hard as a rock. I mean, you could break a chunk off and eat it. We usually make stews or make a stew or or uh, cook some spinach, put some in it just to give it some flavor or something. Interesting. I but guess yeah, you, you do that could. with greens, too. Mm-hmm. So you have to cook it. You don't have to cook it. You can eat it just like this. But um, it's like a rock? Yeah, mountain men and frontiersmen used to make it up before they take their long trek or whatever because it lasts forever. It doesn't have to be per- refrigerated or anything like that and okay. you can just eat it where do we try okay to the meat and berries are highly dehydrated and the tallow seals it so it's it almost highly. like a wax yeah. coating but it's a fat coating an animal fat coating from what is it saying um okay swine um i can't think of the other term for lamb or sheep fat but yeah i know mutton. they used to make mutton yeah well, mutton is actually specifically sheep, whereas goats are something. I, I did research for that on one of my books. Um, okay, so. Yes, Andrea? Well, as far as like survivalist storage, you know, there's like powder milk. Mm-hmm. How do you um, powder milk? I what only bring that up because I actually out? used some today. Because I, I make milk with the powdered milk, and I use that to make my whipped cream. Because so I always make, have that when you don't always have milk in the fridge. How do you make powdered so. milk? Do you put it in the dehydrator? Do you pound it till it's flat? I've never you get a really old powder. cow. It comes out powdered. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, a- I don't know how you make it. I just buy it. I assume they dehydrate. I assume they boil it down to the essence and what's left they crush up and dehydrate. Trail jello, asked Weirdwin. I have not heard of trail jello. Enlighten us. Yes, he no, That's a new one on me. These are like jello <clears throat> jigglers? No, no, it's not. Oh, Andrea's had it or heard of it or something. <laughs> it it sounds thing. familiar if it's what I'm thinking of. Um, ew. <laughs> so while while Weirdwin is typing that out, let's let's turn back to Ed, and you have made bacon Sorry, jam. I'm not sure. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how you make bacon jam from the very beginning. Cook the bacon. Okay. Bacon jam. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on. Alexa, stop. Who's, who's talking? Alexa. Don't make her Alexa. say her name. Alexa, okay. Don't say her name. <laughs> she gets all excited. She's going to give you a recipe on how to make bacon she jam. She was. She was. She just wants to be part of the show. Amazon's everywhere. Um, okay, so... We found... Go ahead. You tend to buy, like, a side... Of pork, right? We we do make our own bacon um, from uh, pork belly. And you buy like mm-hmm. just straight up pork belly. Mm-hmm. And do you cut it before? And again, there's the there's the marinating process, uh, whatever 
bourbon, brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, uh, whatever, maple syrup, whatever flavors uh, you choose. Marinate it for about a week to 14 days. 14 days seems to work better. Um, and then we smoke it. And when you marinate it, you marinate it in a refrigerator. In the refrigerator, yeah. Turn it every 24 hours. Did you do the chores? Did you wash the dishes, take out the trash, and turn the bacon? Then turn your bacon. It's, uh, so then once yeah, you, he did. Once you have marinated it for two weeks, give or take, mm-hmm. you then cook it like a regular bacon. Uh, we smoke it first. Smoke and, it. Uh, yeah. And you have a smoker on the deck? We sure do. You do it a smoke it on the deck. We have a smoker. Okay. And to use and a smoker, basically you're putting coals in there and then you're putting wood chips on top of it. Yeah, we usually use, for bacon, we usually use apple or cherry. Okay. And that's, once the coals are gray and turning gray, that's when you put the chips on top and they're wet you, chips. You put, uh, you don't have to do wet chips. That's that's pretty much an old wives tale. You can do dry chips. Um, you want when you put your meat in your smoker, that's when you want to put your chips on. It's your meat only absorbs the first smoke. It doesn't absorb really any smoke after that. It's mainly just cooking after that. So you want to throw your chips in just as your smoker's coming to temperature, put your chips in, then put your meat in. So it picks up the flavor of whatever wood you're trying to give flavor, apple, apple, cherry, Walnut. Okay, and that is cooked before you put it in the smoker, or is the smoker how you're cooking it? The smoker is how you're cooking it. You're cooking it after you get that first smoke in it. You're cooking from that point on. Meat thermometer to whatever temperature you need. Pork is about 100, 150 to 170 degrees. See, Uh and I I defined the smoking process because some people aren't familiar with that either. You know, some people have never been around a smoker, seen a smoker work, understand. And from what I understand, the wet chips, in theory, is, and give me a second if we're having any interference here, I'm going to. I thought it created, like, more steam. Right, and and delivers the flavor, cooks it quasi-wet instead of just with dry heat. So the bottom line mm-hmm. is to get that smoke flavor into it in whatever form you can. Mm-hmm. So whether it's dry or wet, it doesn't matter. But steam may be a little hotter. But I don't Maybe. Know. I just, um, ooh, did we lose video or is it just me? We may have. I- I'm addressing that now. It's uh, we're gonna keep going though. Okay, um, because you're still recording it, right? We yeah. are. Um, uh, I have found there was no difference in the flavor between wet and dry, so it's one step I could cut out. I'm a little lazy, so I just dry smoke. Dry Understandable. <laughs> And I'm making a note here real quick. Okay, so once you have your bacon smoked, you're, mm-hmm. you're good to go? You, you can start chopping it up and putting stuff in it for the bacon jam? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can um, to make bacon jam, I'll, I'll tell you a little something. I cheat, and I usually buy the bacon out of the store because... The bacon that I smoke, I just feel is too damn good to waste in the bacon jam. <laughs> That's fair. So, um, but yeah, you can you can slice it, chop it up, uh, use a food processor usually if you don't want to do all that chopping. And bacon jam is uh, it it is vinegar based. So um, when do you add the vinegar? Vinegar. Um, when you start the mixing process after the bacon's done, it's it's not a whole lot of vinegar. It's vinegar. The last recipe we had for it had coffee in it. That wasn't very good. Andre, you look like you're frozen. Are you frozen? Um, she does. But yeah, the last recipe had coffee, uh, bourbon, 
Um, if we ever do some more, we'll probably leave the coffee out of it. Okay. It's, uh, it's, I, I think Andrea was connected to the Wi-Fi. She will be back in a moment. I would hope. Okay. Oh. Yes, because I miss her. Yeah. There we go, oh. right there. Now we have two. I'm sending her a message. It is one of those technical <laughs> problem nights. Good times. It's uh, There she is, joining us back. Welcome back, Andrea. Hello. She's working on it. It's, uh, we'll have her back with us in a moment. Okay, so what else can we uh, cover on Survival Food Snacks? Oh, Kevin, thank you so much for sharing your bits with the group. Much Social Assassin 76 yeah. cheered. X100. We just made a uh, dessert that, that we did by accident that made Teresa one. started canning. A dessert, kind of, that we did by accident that Teresa started canning. We um, we uh, had a couple of game birds, and we wanted to do a more traditional stuffing. Um, so we she used uh, pecans, butternut squash, and apples, and chopped it all up and stuffed it in the birds, and we spit-roasted them. And, uh, of course, there was too much of the stuffing left over, so we put it in a big cast iron pot and cooked it down. Man, that, that shit's good. Nice. That's become my new favorite canned product. It's really good. And Kennedy just joined us in the tavern here. It's been a while since we've what seen him. Up? All we need is now is uh, Victoria, and we'll have kind of the whole crew back together, won't we? Yeah. It's a... Uh, we've lost Andrea for a moment. Hold on a second. The screen will fix itself. There she is. It's uh, We're going to see if she joins up with us again. <clears throat> so when camping, there there's more than just canning on this episode. And, and we only have about 10 or 15 minutes left before we hit the end of this episode. So let's talk about quick, easy things to use when camping, to cook when camping. Now, one of my favorite recipes of your wife's is that one mm -hmm. dessert that she makes. Mm -hmm. now, can you go over what that is? Because I think I remember it all, but I'm betting you remember it better. Uh, it's it's basically a box of cake mix, uh, a box of fruit of your choice, and you just dump it in a pan, take a whole stick of butter, slice it up and put it on top of it you don't add any other liquid or anything and you bake it and it's evil good it is and and when he says bake it he means put it in a large cast iron pot over a fire <laughs> or good glowing coals as the case might be and it takes about 45 yeah. minutes to cook coals. if i'm not mistaken yeah about about 40 minutes or so yeah and uh what kind it's of fruit do you good. find best to add I like cherries. I love cherries. Of course. Okay. It's a, what other quick, easy, I mean, obviously we've always got like hot dogs and prepackaged stuff, mm -hmm. but when mm -hmm. it comes to actually cooking, it, it, Weird Win, by the way, it is just incredible. It is just great. And <laughs> I, do you stir it during the cooking process, Ed? Nope. All right. Just let it bake. And you have to, I'm guessing you have to put it in a certain order, otherwise something will burn on the bottom. Uh, you put the fruit in, you put the cake mix over top of it, and then the butter on top. Okay. Just cook. So the, that makes sense. So what other things do you have? A trail mix, Weird Wind says. That's actually a great idea. Because this is something yeah. you can dehydrate yourself. Um purchase nuts mm -hmm. if you're using nuts and by the way in my trail mix oddly enough as much as i've had ones with chocolate in it i prefer it with just fruits and nuts for my trail mix 
And I did recently read a recipe on how to make your own granola, which I don't think oh. anybody realizes you can make your own granola. It's uh, Andrea is still attempting to reconnect. That's the noises everybody's hearing. We're trying to get her back on. It's one of those nights. It's uh, what other stuff, Ed? Because I know you make a really good buffalo stew. Uh, yeah, that's not necessarily quick. Uh, it's it's a game stew. Teresa likes likes to make it a lot when we're camping. Mm -hmm. Big group of people. It's basically rabbit. Uh, a couple of yard birds, uh, elk, buffalo, whatever other game we can get our hands on. And it's an all day cooking job over an open fire. But it's, it's good. It's what well is, worth it. What do you add, uh, for seasoning? Cause I'm guessing you don't have beef bouillon or anything. Uh, actually, she uses, uh, canned, uh, not beef bouillon, but uh, the liquid, because we save like when we when we have steak or rib roast or anything like that, we we save the bones and she makes her own stock from it. Uh, it's uh, let me respond to a few things here in uh, chat. Weirdwin mm -hmm. says ramen spaghetti, pack of that chief beef ramen, boil the noodles, drain most of it, add beef seasoning, some tomato paste, stir. <laughs> Kennedy says, I love jerky. Mm -hmm. Hard to find low sodium, though. That's why we're talking about making our own jerky. Because do you add salt yeah. to your jerky, Ed? I, we don't add salt to anything. Yeah. So that is great. Yeah. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to cut this one short. And, uh, sure. We'll... One second. Let me do this real quick. Let chat know what's going on but uh we'll cut this out right now and uh so guys let us know you can email us at talk of the tavern show at gmail.com and let us know what your favorites are um and we'd love to hear it we'd love some of these extra recipes from folks and we're going to do our closing right now. I want to thank everybody who threw bits tonight. We had Elizabeth and Chris and Gary and Kevin all throwing bits. And forgive me if I missed anybody in that there. I also want to make sure I thank uh, folks on Patreon and PayPal who have subscribed to us monthly. And that's Triple U and Ethan and Berta and Musical Wizardry who support us every month that way. As well as everybody here who first and foremost showed up. But our subscribers who are here in chat with us and everybody throwing bits, followings, hosting, and rating. We really appreciate it. Here's our outro. And uh, we'll catch you on the next show. And in the next one, by the way, is going to be Flat Earth Conspiracy. So make sure you join us for that one. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the Tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night. holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday.
Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with Carrier. Products sold separately. 